Hey guys, East from FGC Academy here. Recently, Capcom released a Season 2 update for Street Fighter V. This includes a slew of changes for the characters, as well as mechanics updates for the entire system of the game. It can be a little bit difficult to sift through the notes that they released, so what we're doing here today is taking a look at some of the more influential changes that you should be on the lookout for Season 2. Let's take a look. At the start of Season 1, a lot of players really thought that when Alex was released, he was going to be a really strong character. It ended up being a situation where he wasn't as strong as people thought, because of the, some of the tools that he lacked and some of the things that other characters did better than him. But the thing a lot of people generally agreed on was the fact that he had really strong normal, uh, especially at the footsie range. Attacks like Crouching Medium Punch, which were nigh unpunishable, but had really good range and uh, really kind of just stopped the opponents from moving forward at all, really helped Alex to become... I guess a kind of underdog, or not underdog, but maybe an underutilized character who was still good. Uh, his setup game was a little bit lacking, but uh, going into Season 2, uh, unfortunately he caught a lot of nerfs, and probably some undeserved, or, or excuse me, some undeserved ones, also some ones that because of the game mechanics changes overall, were kind of unavoidable for him, and he didn't really get the things that he needed to catch up, or to make him as good as or better than he was in his season one iteration. Let's jump into a couple of them right now. Uh, looking at his buffs, the first one that he got, his V skill gets additional V gauge after the animation is finished. So uh, now whenever you actually do the animation, if your opponent lets you finish it, Alex gets I think an additional 30 V gauge. Um, not a big jump, but uh, it does help when your opponent is willing to sit full screen and do nothing versus Alex. In him being a character who needs to get in, he has the option of just continuously using his V skill to gain uh, meter. Alex being a character who's really strong or gets much stronger when he has his V skill, the parry as well as the unblockable fully charged hook. Uh, this will be really good for him, I think. Uh, next up, the uh, the damage ratio for Air's knee smash, so he's kind of like uh, anti-air attack, was changed. Looking at the numbers from Season 1, I never noticed, noticed this myself, but uh, it was really surprising. Uh, in the Air Knee Smash, uh, when the first hit hits you, it only does 10 damage. If he successfully hits you with it and gets the entire follow-up, it does more damage. So, In Season 1, the ratio was 10 damage on the initial hit, 120 on the follow-up. Uh, and so if Alex ended up trading, then he traded heavily in the opponent's favor. Uh, considering he's only doing 10 damage, they're likely doing upwards of 90 or 80. Now that's been adjusted a little bit, he gets 50 and 80 for the normal, and for the EX version as well, the damage was adjusted. It was uh, adjusted from 50, or excuse me, from 10 to 150 to 50 and 110. So the second hit lost a little bit of damage, but the first hit, even if you trade, you're likely to get more damage now. Uh, also, just a side note, the distance after the EX air smash once you land it has been increased. Um, and finally, his probably his, one of his better buffs or his most important buffs is the fact that forward heavy punch, his kind of like arm swinging lariat attack, is now plus 6 on hit rather than being plus 5. This is good, it, it allows him to dish out a little bit more damage uh, when he catches someone uh, either pressing buttons during his pressure or during a, a close setup. So now, instead of uh, going for small jab attacks or whatever, he can go for uh, a standing medium punch, uh, which al should allow him to get more combo, or more damage in, in combo opportunities. Uh, so looking at the nerfs, which I, th which this list doesn't really accurately show just how many nerfs he got, but the fact that the first one says mini ground normal slowed down is probably the overarching problem of the character now. Um, moves, pretty much every move from medium and above got slowed down by at least one frame. Uh, most were slowed down by two frames, so basically everything Alex has now starts up at about eight frames, um, if not more. Going right down the list here, his standing medium kick is now plus one frame startup, so it went from eight to nine frame startup. Um, his uh, crouching medium punch also increased startup by one frame, so from seven frames startup to eight frames. His crouching medium kick got two frames of startup, so from 8 to 10. His Fort Heavy Punch, which did get the buff of being more uh, positive on hit, also got plus one frame of startup, so now it starts up in 11 frames. So he's going to be a bit of a slower paced character than he was in Season 1, and because of the fact that he's this makes him 
a little bit slower than a lot of the casts at mid-range. I think he's really going to struggle there, where in Season 1 it might have been an easier time for Alex players. Going right back down the list, uh, one of his really strong moves, the Elbow Slash, has been significantly reduced uh, as far as distance, hurt boxes, damage, um, and also pushback to the opponent. Uh, so for example, just for example, the Light Kick Slash uh, got more startup to kind of go along with the rest of his normals. It has more recovery. Uh, it has a bigger hurt box, so you're more likely to be able to just knock him out of it. It's got less pushback on block, and it also uh, knocks the opponent far, uh, less far away. Uh, the medium kick slash got plus three additional frames of recovery. It also has less pushback, and it also has a bigger hurt box. Um, and to follow up with that, the heavy kick slash also has less pushback and a bigger hurt box. The fact that these have less pushback means that in certain cases in Season 1 where he would be negative, however, the opponent couldn't hit him or reach him. Uh, the fact that in Season 2 that the attacks have less pushback means that he's likely going to be punished in those situations where you just throw it out at the mid-range. And that really hurts Alex because he could use those moves in Season 1 to kind of bully your opponent at mid-range if they try to neutral jump. It also caught neutral jumps, which is really strong. But yeah, in Season 2 he's going to have to find other ways of kind of making the opponent uh, go on defense or making the opponent react in the mid-range. And to kind of round out things here, a, a smaller smaller nerf, his Crouching Light Punch has more pushback on hit. Uh, that means he'll likely be able to get less combo damage or you have to confirm attacks faster. And finally his super did lose a little bit of damage. This one shouldn't come as a surprise as a lot of characters supers who had 350 damage supers overall were reduced to 340. So Alex players shouldn't feel too hurt by this one as it was a kind of overarching change for the rest of the cast as well. So yeah, I'd like to say that Alex was a character who had potential in Season 1 and got better, but going into Season 2 it doesn't really look that way. Uh, a lot of his things were slowed down, the fact that his elbow slashes, which let him bully at the mid-range, are basically reduced in effectiveness, or almost reduced to the point where they can't be used, really hurts him. Um, and he didn't really get anything to make up for those changes, unfortunately. Uh, he didn't get much damage, he got 10 or 10 damage here and there, but it really wasn't much to make up for that. The, of course, the air knee smash ratio change to the damage was good, but that honestly isn't going to save him uh, against the other characters in the cast. Did you know that at the current time, Guile is one of the only characters, if not the only character, who doesn't have a character art card that is actually in the game? Either that or it was really difficult to track it down because I looked everywhere on the site, uh, every on Google, and I could not find his normal character art card. So if you do find it, let me know. I'd be interested to see that. Uh, but for now, we have uh, Green Guile as our character art. But uh, looking at Guile in Season 1, uh, he was a character who a lot of stronger players believed had the best neutral game out of the, the cast. And you know he had a really strong fireball game. He wasn't a very combo-heavy character, but he really controlled what your opponents could do. And was one of the only characters who were seen to have a really strong defense out of the entire cast. Of course, that didn't stop him. He also had a really strong offense if you could execute with his uh, kind of sonic boom loops or some of the the combos that involved his V trigger. Going into season two, all of that got better. We'll take a look in a moment, but. Guile's mantra for changes was basically nerf everything that is a punch and buff everything that is not a punch. So let's hop right into it. As far as his buffs are concerned, his forward and or back light kick attack, which is I believe called his bazooka knee, saw changes that made it nigh unpunishable whether it was on hit or block. Um, on hit it got plus one frame advantage taking him down from negative two to negative one and on block it he got three frames of advantage taking him down from negative six to negative three that's a big reduction the fact that, that move could be only used at the best spacing for Guile really meant that he had to be careful when he uses it now if he's just negative three there are a lot of scenarios where characters are just not able to punish him basically any character who has a four frame normal as their fastest normal just can't punish him. They gain advantage, but he doesn't get much after that. And please take into advantage that these numbers are based on hitting with the first active frame. If you hit on the last active frame, you're very plus now. Uh, going right back down the list, uh, probably his biggest buff is the fact that his V trigger, which in season one was three gauges to you had to fill up before it activated, is now two. 
what makes it so strong is the fact that he still has the same time or the timer for the sonic booms which means he basically gets uh, V-Trigger for a third of the work he did or he had to, to work for in Season 1. Uh, going, or continuing down, his Crouching Heavy Punch is now a crush counter, uh, which is good as, as one of his anti-air moves. It's good if you catch an opponent right before they do an attack in the air. You're likely to get a crush counter. You can get more damage off of that. But this is a really good change, considering that a lot of characters in the cast saw even weaker anti-airs for Season 2. And to round things off, uh, Sonic Boom, it got an, a, a damage buff, so 10 damage, so from 50 to 60. And it's also more advantage, or excuse me, it's at more advantage on block than it was in Season 1. So before, if you blocked the Sonic Boom, Guile was at least plus 1. Now he is at least plus 2. This is assuming that you block it as soon as he does the attack. So if it's just in front of you, you can basically bet that you should not press buttons after you block Son a Guile Sonic Boom at all in Season 2. Looking at Guile's nerfs, um, just right off the bat, his Crouching Medium Punch has more pushback on hit. This might not seem like a big change, but it does change the fact that Guile now has to do different uh, combo routes to get a kind of uh, Sonic Boom loop that he had in Season 1, kind of make, or doing a huge combo with the V-Trigger that he got. Um, it's not impossible now, but it's much more difficult than it was in Season 1 to get that kind of long Sonic Boom, boom combo off on your opponent because of this change in and of itself. In addition to that, a lot of his key punch normals were slowed down. Uh, moves like Standing Medium Punch are now uh, 6 frame startup, that's plus 1 frame from Season 1. Standing Heavy Punch is plus 1 frame startup, so from 7 to 8. Um, and so the fact that those moves are not as good or they're slower, of course that's a change that happens to a lot of the characters in the cast, but it does hurt Guile in the fact that uh, some of his combos might may not work as they did in Season 1. Uh, next, his Sonic Boom is now negative one frame on hit. So we talked about it being stronger on block. Uh, the opponent was at, or excuse me, Guile was at plus two advantage. On hit, however, it's now only at plus seven advantage. That's down one frame. That's not a huge, a huge burden to him, considering uh, his sweep was slowed down to match this change. So it's now started. Excuse me, his sweep now starts up in seven frames. So if you hit with a sonic boom, you're still able to get the same combos that you did in season one for the most part. And in addition to that, his sonic booms did lose stun in V Trigger, and not a small amount. It's a pretty considerable number. He lost 30 stun for pretty much every sonic boom in V-Trigger, so if you're going for combos that stun your opponent and then a follow-up, you're less likely to get those in Season 2. And finally, we did mention that his V-Trigger gauge has been reduced from 3 bars to 2 bars, but his V-Trigger timer reduction has been changed. Um, to spare you a lot of technical information, basically, whenever Guile used a Sonic Boom, uh, or one of his kind of uh, free sonic booms by pressing the V trigger button while in V trigger. Uh, they they tick down a little bit of his V trigger more than normal based on the timer. And that's been changed in season one. Basically, what happens now is the first boom has more timer or V gauge reduction when you use it. The follow up booms have less reduction. So overall, it should have an effect where Guile can still do the same things that he did in Season 1. However, if you're just using or throwing one boom at a time or one extra boom at a time, you're going to run out of V-Trigger faster. Um, and to make, uh, to kind of balance that out, Capcom did increase the damage for the follow-ups by 10. So, um, that's Guile for the most part. I mean, it's really hard to not see this character being insanely good. Um, the fact that he's more at, a, at advantage in the neutral situation means that his neutral game is better. The fact that his his count, or excuse me, his crouching heavy punch is now crush counter makes it so that his anti airs have a bit of teeth to them, whereas a lot of characters in the cast don't. And the fact that he got damage on his sonic boom, maybe kind of his signature attack, and the attack that you're going to be facing the most, really helps him out. Um, he has a, a huge arsenal of normals that allow him to kind of be used in any situation, so he's never caught off guard. And with all of these tools together, it's it's really hard not seeing Guile being one of the most used characters for people who 
are a patient and b have some level of execution i think those people are really going to do well this season all right guys thanks for watching let me know what you thought about the changes so far in the comments below also let us know what characters you'd like to see next uh, so we are trying to get these out as soon as possible hopefully finishing up the entire cast in about two or three weeks so uh, let us know who you want to see next thanks take care keep on fighting